coming up next an occupational therapist by profession your host for the next session with his quick wit and funny sense of humor he will make you laugh till it hurts and that's for sure he can recognize a bird just by the sound of its squawk <coughs> presenting jared de lima in the, the rock talk hey good evening and welcome to rock talk I'm here at one of Christ Construction's favorite projects, the MFC building. I'm here to tell you a little bit more about this project and meet some of the amazing people behind it. You know, brothers and sisters, I'm a huge football fan. And if you're a football fan too, you'll remember last year in the Champions League semi-final, Barcelona defeated Liverpool 3-0 in the first leg. Now Liverpool needed to win 4-0 in the next leg to go to the next round. And the next week they played and Liverpool played with such a drive and a determination that they won that game 4-0. Now the reason I'm telling you this is because I want to ask you. Do you think Liverpool would have won that game if they didn't know that they had to win 4-0? No, I don't think so because I think they had a vision. They knew what they wanted. And so you'll see having a vision is very important. Every great success story has a vision behind it. This building exists because an architect had a vision for it. And brothers and sisters, even scripture tells us how important having a vision is. In Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 it says without a vision the people lose restraint but happy is the one who follows instruction Proverbs chapter 19 verse 21 goes on to say many are the plans of the human heart but it is the decision of the lord that endures So likewise our MFC community too has a vision We learned in session 1 how we are supposed to build our lives on the rock that is Christ how we are supposed to build our families and our community on the rock that is Jesus Christ And so built on the rock and given to us by Christ our vision is we are an evangelistic and missionary community committed to become families empowered by the holy spirit to renew the face of the earth now i know it all sounds a bit complicated but let me break it down it starts with we are this tells us that this is our identity you know mfc youth is not just a prayer group it's not just a place we go to on sundays when we are bored it's not just a place where we can have fun camps and conferences It's a place where we are empowered by the spirit to renew ourselves to become missionaries for Christ. This means being a missionary even in the midst of a pandemic. This means evangelizing wherever God has placed us, in our homes, in our schools, in our tuitions, when we hang out with our friends in the evenings. As you are aware, we've undergone a name change. We move from Couples for Christ India to Missionary Families of Christ. And with this name change should come an identity change for us as well. We are no longer just couples for Christ youth. We are as big a part of the missionary family as every other part of this community. And so we need to take on that identity. We need to take it on as a responsibility to be missionary, to be evangelistic. The second part of the vision statement says that we are to be families empowered by the Holy Spirit to renew the face of the earth. This means that whether or not your family is in the community, we are still called to evangelize. this may be you know just by simple things by helping out at home by being obedient by being respectful but it also means bringing the gospel to them and since the world is made out of families this is how we are called to renew it so you see we are in the year 2020 and in the year 2020 god is calling us through this conferences through the things he is leading us to learn that we need to have a 2020 vision a sharp and a clear vision for who we are to be And now more than ever it's very important to hold on to this vision because the devil is distorting this beautiful world that God has created. We live in an age where more and more things that are not acceptable to God have become acceptable to society. We are told that our faith is no longer an integral part of our life but something that's disposable, something that we don't need. And so we tend to put our faith in a box and keep it in the corner and not really expose it to all the other aspects of our lives. We don't put Christ into our conversations with our friends into the time we spend on the internet into the time we spend alone and thus we see a collapse of the christian culture the idea is today that since we are in a constant state of evolution we are constantly becoming smarter and better things like christianity and the bible have had their time now it's time for new wisdom we've decided that there is no single truth and we need to make up our own truths and live out our own truths it's so difficult nowadays to find media reports that aren't biased It's so difficult to find music and movies that doesn't celebrate sinfulness. 
It's so difficult to find youngsters nowadays who are strong in their moral beliefs. Brothers and sisters, we need to believe the truth rather than the lies that we've been constantly fed through our screens. The reason this is dangerous is because once we believe things that are void of Christ, we too become empty and void of Christ. By far the biggest threat today is to the family. The devil knows that the family is the reflection of the Holy Trinity. He knows the family is the reflection of the most holy family, which is Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And since he has no power directly over God, he tries to attack each and every one of our families. Brothers and sisters, if we think of the sins that we commit, on some level or another, they may affect our family relationships. I remember when I was struggling with my anger, I would take it out on my family members. When I was struggling with pornography and masturbation, out of guilt, I would spend less time with my family. When I was struggling with my pride, I would disobey my family. Think of all the big moral issues of today. Homosexuality, gender ideology, abortion. All of these are direct attacks on the family, the kind of family that God wanted for us and the kind of family that this community is trying to renew. And though not all of us may struggle with these personally, we are all so opinionated about it. We all want to say things about it. And many a time it's not rooted in the truth. Even though we may know the truth, we are terrified of standing up for the truth. And we need to introspect and see why that is. Is it because of a fear of rejection, perhaps? Maybe a fear of being less popular? If we are not ready to stand up for the truth, it may be that we don't have our feet planted firmly in Christ. Now, if we want to be faithful to God's call for us, it's not just enough to hold on to the vision. We need to grow in the vision. Now, to share some more concrete ways in which she has grown in the vision, we have a very special guest joining us. She's a poet, an artist and a trivia queen. But more importantly, she loves God and she is committed in service. We're going to meet Anna Pace from Panjim. Hi Anna, welcome to Rock Talk. So the first step to growth is belief. What is it that you believe? I believe that God has put us in the position that we are in, in our families and in the community, in order to experience the love He shows us and to share that love with others. I believe that our mission begins in our families and then goes out to the whole world through the community. Hey, yeah, when you and I believe in the same things. But what gives you the strength to be firm in this belief? I believe that God gives us the strength and His grace and the Holy Spirit through the sacraments. Before the pandemic, I used to frequent uh, the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist and confession and they really helped me go through hard times and difficult experiences. God also strengthens me through this community, through the interactions with other members, especially my GD leaders and accountability partners, and also in every opportunity that I get to serve. So true. But you know, believing is one thing, actually being a missionary, being evangelistic is another. So on a day-to-day -day basis, how do you live out this call? So after I finished my first intake camp, I moved to a new school. And I went from having 40 plus Catholic students in my class to me being the only one in my class. So that was a huge culture shift. And uh, I can say after two years, I haven't really made any enemies, which is a good thing, I guess. And I wish I could say it was because I just shut my mouth, but I'm a person who speaks out. So I had to speak out against uh, gossip. I do not participate in gossip, that's what I try to do. I also try to stand my ground on difficult topics such as homosexuality and abortions and stuff like that. And it used to get really hard. What kept me going was personal prayer and interactions with members of the community, like we discuss these issues and uh, pray for each other. In the community, I realized that if the community needs to grow in the vision, I needed to do my part, even when that meant travelling all the way from Vasco, like a one hour bus ride for meetings. I try to be regular with meetings and uh, to be prompt and to volunteer, to take up any jobs in community, like handling the intercessions or giving a session or things like that. Wow. So that's in school and with your friends. Uh, but what about at home, like with your family? So growing up, my parents instilled in us the importance of spending time together as a family. So we keep time aside uh, to pray the rosary every day and to spend time uh, and have a meal together. So that means keeping our devices away and having discussions about various things and talking about our days. That's, that's amazing. Uh, you know, when I was your age, I, you know, in, to a certain level, I was able to believe in and uh, live out the, the calling. 
but i found it very difficult to share especially with people outside of uh, community to share this vision so could you give me some tips on how to do that um me personally i try to share what i learn through the way i dress the way i talk and behave with others and what i put out on social media i've seen that my dress the way i dress has transitioned from what is socially accepted as cool which is like revealing clothing and stuff to stuff that's more modest and becoming of a child of god i also try to avoid foul language and offensive language and talk with respect and dignity especially towards my elders in community and outside another thing i did was i changed my instagram profile from one on which i would post pictures of myself to posting the word of god i do bible lettering and it's really nice to hear when uh, a non catholic says that it's inspired them so those are the ways i try to share what i learn wow you've certainly cemented my resolve to grow in the vision thank you anna you can get back to work now so you see brothers and sisters for us to grow in the vision of being missionary and evangelistic we need to do three things believe in the vision live it and share it but what's in it for us what do we gain from growing in the vision to tell us a little more about that we have two people the first is one of jesus's closest buddies himself john the apostle john wrote in his gospel that jesus said you did not choose me but i chose you and appointed you so that you may go and bear fruit fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name the father will give you what a beautiful promise but i know what you're thinking last year's conference they told us about bearing fruit this year they're telling us to bear fruit they're running conferences or grocery stores well to tell us a little more about what these fruit are because they're not apples and bananas we're going to meet someone else very special we're going to meet kalten from the kalangut singles who is built very strong indeed he's an inspiring speaker he's a talented musician and he's most definitely a compliant boy so let's go over to kalten hi kalten hi jared so we can summarize the fruit we bear by the word fruit itself f stands for fidelity or faithfulness when we live out as missionaries god helps us be more faithful to our call to our life and to our mission He helps arrange our schedules so that we may attend meetings and conferences. He helps us to give our time, talent and treasures to service. So Carlton, how has God helped you be more faithful? So I started working in the year 2016 and for work I had to move to Mysore in Karnataka. Now, it was away from home and the community is not present in Mysore. So I really missed meetings. I missed the the community, the the sharing, the fellowship that we had. I missed our praise and worship, and I really longed to be there. Whenever I used to come back to home to Goa, I I used to get all that, and it filled me with joy. I used to yearn for it when I would go back. Uh, I I offered this to God every day, and the Lord really made a way. In the year 2017, I got to move to Mumbai. The community is present in Mumbai, but it came with its own set of challenges. uh the 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 place of meeting was about 30 kilometers away and i had to travel by local train just to share in brief about my day uh it the meetings would be on sunday so i would wake up in the morning at 6 am and travel about 30 kilometers attend mass by 9 o'clock and by 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock was the meeting by 1:30 i had to go back to work and a full day shift at work so i would end by 11 and i would be completely exhausted but the lord gave me the grace to co- to continue through it and he helped me persevere through this and he obviously made it help me made it, make it for meetings on a regular basis so this is how i was able to bear fruit that's really great the next letter is r which stands for repentance when we seek to grow in the vision god gives us the grace to continually change our lives he breaks the patterns of sh- sin shame and guilt He helps us renew ourselves and become more like Christ. The next letter is U, which stands for unity. We are all in this together, and so God gives us the grace to be united with Him as well with each other in the community. There was a time when I struggled being united with my brothers and sisters in the community. I found it difficult to work with people. I found it difficult to get along with certain people. But God really worked miracles in the way He led me to understand that we are all children of God. 
and he led me to see Christ in each of them. Brothers and sisters, God gives us the grace not to grumble, not to speak ill of our leaders, of our formators, of our fellow brothers and sisters. He helps us let go of our own preferences and agendas. He helps us become more encouraging towards each other and build each other up. So we've seen F stands for fidelity, R stands for repentance, and U for unity. Now we move on to I, which stands for integrity. Since as evangelists we have to lead by example, God gives us the grace to be men and women of integrity. He helps us be good both in our public and our private lives. He helps us become reflections of Christ. The last letter is T, which stands for transformation. The more we hold on to and live like missionaries and evangelists, God gives us the grace to completely change our lives and become more like Christ. So let's hear what Carlton has to say about how God has transformed his life. I'd like to share about how I got into the sin of lust and through community I was able to come out of it. Uh, I started with porn at an early age of 13, but it was not until the age of 17 when I joined college that I started with masturbation. I, I happened to encounter these two guys who were sharing illicit content and on questioning them, it kind of backfired where they questioned me and they ganged up upon me, asking me whether I didn't do it myself. This played on in my mind when I got home and I had to experiment with it in my own life. And I got hooked onto it. I got hooked onto it for a long time, for about six months, six years. But uh, there were times when I really regretted it and I went for confession on a regular basis. Uh, I, I asked the Lord to help me and there were times where I would come out of it but again fall into sin. It was not until a recent program called the Men of Valor in Community where they spoke about accountability partners and another brother of mine and I, we decided to do this together. Uh, we, we called each other on a regular basis whenever we felt that we were going to fall into sin. We made it a point that we would connect over call and pray for each other. This happened almost daily. We also did a program called Strife 21. And it, we really saw the Lord working in our lives and He helped us come out of it. About a few months later, I was given the responsibility of household servant. And this would put things in perspective. If I couldn't take care of my own passions and desires, how was I going to lead and be an example to my own brothers and community? So it's been about five months now and it's been a constant battle. It's not been easy at all. But through God's grace and mercy, I've been able to come out of it and all glory belongs to Him. This is how I've been able to bear fruit for His kingdom. That's an amazing sharing. Uh, it's really great to see someone so tall yet so grounded. So in conclusion, our vision is crucial to winning the world for Christ. It is challenging but certainly not impossible. Because we rely not on our strength, but we are empowered by the Holy Spirit who tells us, do not be afraid for I am with you. So let us live, let us move, let us have our being in the Spirit. Let us look towards the fulfillment of our vision, which is the renewal of the family, the renewal of the world. For it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what has not entered into human hearts, what God has prepared for those who love Him, they shall receive through the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, God wants to work miracles in your lives. God wants you to work for his kingdom and he wants to give you your reward. So from all of us here at Rock Talk, thank you and God bless. Back to work.